The olfactory receptors are located in a specialized portion of the nasal mucosa, the yellowish pigmented olfactory mucous membrane. Olfactory mucous membrane is constantly covered by mucus which is produced by Bowman cells present under the basal lamina of cell membrane. Receptors are bipolar neurons with lifespan of 60 days. In between the receptor cells, there are supporting cells and basal cells. Each neuron has a short and thick dendrite with expanded end called as olfactory rod. From these rods, 10 to 20 cilia, uh, which are unmyelinated processes, project to the surface of mucosa. The odoriferous substances combine with these receptors on the surface of cilia. This will initiate G-protein coupled reactions and finally leading to opening of calcium channels. Calcium influx initiates receptor potential, then action potential develops which gets transmitted along olfactory nerve. Olfactory bulb. Olfactory bulb is a part of cerebral hemisphere located at the base of the cerebral cortex just below the frontal lobe. In olfactory bulb, the exons of receptors enter olfactory bulb via cribriform plate and synapse with primary dendrites of mitral cells and tuft cells to form olfactory glomeruli. In addition to mitral cells, tuft cells, it also contains inhibitory interneurons that is granular and periglomerular cells. Each glomerulus receives information from 26,000 receptors but there are only 24 mitral cells and 68 tuft cells. So this is diagram showing the olfactory mucosa which uh, can see odorants, then you have mucus layer, then you have supporting cells and olfactory cells and we have a Bowman's glands which continuously secrete mucus. So then the axons of these receptor cells pierce through the cribriform plate and they reach the olfactory bulb which is a part of uh, the cerebral hemisphere just below the frontal lobe and olfactory bulb they mainly have the the mitral cells and tuft cells and they have uh, uh, inhibitory interneurons that is granular cells and periglomerular cells where they form synapse with uh, receptor axons and they form the olfactory glomeruli olfactory pathway olfactory nerve uh, olfactory nerve pierces the cribriform plate of ethmoid to reach the olfactory bulb and it synapses with the mitral and tuft cells from there axons of mitral and tuft cells form olfactory stria and the olfactory stria are three in number and they are medial striate lateral striae and intermediate striae Medial striate, they are formed by the axons of tuft cells. They cross the midline in the anterior commissure to form synapses with granule cells in the opposite olfactory bulb. Whereas the lateral striae, they are formed by the axons of mitral cells, runs to the olfactory cortex on the same side. Olfactory cortex includes the part of limbic system, that is the anterior olfactory nucleus, pyriform cortex, olfactory tubercle, amygdala and entorhinal cortex whereas intermediate stri the other fibers ends in the olfactory tubercle and hence with the limbic system the characteristic of olfactory pathway are there are, there are no neocortical projection there is no relay in thalamus receptors are directly in contact with the atmosphere and receptors are tele and chemoreceptors they are rapid and early adapting so this is a diagram showing olfactory pathway from the olfactory receptors the axons pierce through the cribriform plate reaches the glomerulus from the mitral and tuft cells it is going to lead to the uh, three stria lateral intermediate and medial whereas lateral stria they end in the ipsilateral olfactory cortex the intermediate it is going to end in the olfactory tubercle that is the limbic system and the medial stride it is crossover to reach to the uh, opposite olfactory bulb and anterior commissure some of the ab abnormalities re related to olfaction are anosmia
which is nothing but complete absence of smell, parosmia is change in the character of the smell, hyposmia is diminished olfactory sensitivity and dysosmia is distorted sense of smell sensation.